welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing the early councils of the Church and how doctrine developed in those early times. Officially, there have been 21 ecumenical councils in Church history, but I think the first 10 will be enough for this season. Today, we'll be discussing the 10th official ecumenical council, the Second Lateran Council. The name comes from an old Roman family, Lateranus, who lost their property to Emperor Constantine, who in turn later gave it to the church. On that land, which was part of Rome, several buildings were constructed, including the Lateran Palace, the Pontifical Lateran University, and the earliest of all the Christian basilicas, the Archbasilica of St. John Lateran. This council was held a very short time after the last one in relative terms, less than two decades later, in 1139 A.D., World leaders, lords, kings, and the like had continued the practice of trying to purchase the appointment of bishops, a practice called simony, despite the judgment of the previous council against it. Because of this, many of the canons of this council were devoted specifically to the issue of simony, but there was another larger issue that needed to be dealt with. You see, nine years earlier, in 1130, there had been a papal election, and the person elected had been a man named Gregorio Paparesci who then took the name of Pope Innocent II. However, a whole bunch of cardinals, more than had voted for Innocent, were really upset with his election, and they got together to elect somebody else, Pietro Perleoni, who took the name Anacletus II. Then they drove Innocent II out of Rome. However, the problem with trying to elect a pope because you don't like the one you've got is that it's quite impossible to elect a pope if there's already one in office. He would need to leave office first in order for the new election to have any validity at all, and Innocent had never done that. Because of this, Anacletus had spent nine years in Rome pretending to be the Pope before this council finally passed judgment on the validity, or in this case lack thereof, of his claims. Anacletus was declared a schismatic and a heretic, and the rules he'd established were declared invalid. Thirty canons came out of this council, some denouncing and refuting the practice of simony, and others declaring that Innocent was the true pope, not Anacletus. This, by the way, is what historians mean when they refer to anti-popes. It means somebody who spent a while pretending to be the pope, but who really wasn't one. In addition to dealing with these two issues, some canons of this council also reaffirmed the judgments of previous councils, and a few other issues were raised as well. Bishops were told to be good examples of humility and holiness to the faithful. Subdeacons, who'd taken wives or concubines, were to be removed from their positions, and no one was allowed to participate at the mass of a priest who had a wife or concubine, unless they just had no idea. The same measures were decreed against women religious attempting to marry. Some monks and clergymen had started practicing law or medicine to try to make money on the side, and they were told to stop. Lay people were forbidden to possess the tithes of the church allocated to religious purposes, and young and unordained people were forbidden to become archdeacons or deans in the church. Churches weren't to be given to hired priests. Truce was ordered from Wednesday evening to Monday morning and throughout the whole Christmas season. Usury, taking interest from loans, was again forbidden, along with jousting, incest, arson, and attacking clerics or monks, or anyone who claimed sanctuary within a church or cemetery. Nobody was allowed to claim any title in the church by virtue of lineage or descent, and if a person was the son of a priest, he was to be removed from ministering at Mass unless he was living religiously in a monastery or the office of a clergyman. The right of kings to dispense justice was specifically acknowledged, and bishops who relaxed this decree were expected to make restitution and leave their office for a year. Priests were told to be on guard against false penance, the practice of omitting certain sins in confession, or only pretending to be sorry for having committed them. Everyone who condemned the Eucharist, the baptism of children, the priesthood, legitimate marriages, and other church orders were to be banned from the church. If a person received any church title or role from a layperson, it was to be considered invalid. Women weren't to go around calling themselves nuns if they didn't belong to a real religious order or obey its rules, and real nuns weren't to sing in the same choir as monks or clergymen. Religious men weren't to be excluded from election for bishop, and the practice of archery and crossbowmanship were prohibited to be used against Christians. Again, a lot of issues needed to be dealt with, some of them very large, but that was the kind of time people lived in back then. With that, we've gone through all the first ten councils, and next season, we'll begin a season studying some perennial or timeless issues from a Christian perspective, with the first question being, how do we know which books belong in the Bible? 
See you then. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.